Okay. It's been a while since we have talked about how you can change the broadcasting power on your drone from CE mode to FCC mode. I believe the last video um, that I covered was uh, with the Mini 4 Pro. So the other day I got an email from the Drone Tweaks support team asking me if it would make sense <laughs> to make a follow-up video showing you um, that this uh, yeah, alteration or modification still works for the Mini 5 Pro, which is the latest edition from uh, DJI. And I'll be happy to check that for you, but I'm not using it on a regular basis because I don't need it in this area where I live. I don't have a lot of uh, interference um, that they will sort of prevent me from having a solid contact to the drone. So if you go into the Drone Tweaks website and you can see here, they, here this is all the drones that they're currently supporting. It's a lot of them. And the first one that is the latest edition, the DJI Mini 5 Pro from DJI. So let's press that. And you can see there's uh, two options available here. There's uh, one for uh, iOS and one for Android. And the reason why there's a significant price difference between these two is that um, the company needs to pay some sort of Apple tax to have the application running on iOS devices. At least that's what I'm told. So what are you actually getting by purchasing uh, this application? Apart from being able to, um, when you need it, switch from CE to FCC mode for better connection between the drone and the controller. You can also remove the 120 meter, not millimeter, the 120 meter height limit in the EU. Just be aware you're not allowed with a C0 drone like this one to fly more than 120 meters above the takeoff point. Then there's another one that is really, really useful. And that is that you can enable autonomous flights during waypoint missions. So right now, if these two loses connection, <laughs> the drone will stop and then you need to go fetch it or it will return to home. Uh, with the, this application, you'll be able to proceed the operation. So that's super nice. Also, you can remove the restriction that prevented a separation of more than 50 meters between the drone and the remote when you are doing active track. That's one thing that is super annoying because that's not always accurate. And the only reason why this limitation is put in place is because you don't need VLOS if you have the drone closer to you than 50 meters. Uh, so, so if you're playing around, uh, yeah, I don't know, biking around, you don't need to look at the drone all the time and then crash into something. And that's why this 50 meter limitation has been put in place. The only downside is that if you want to take advantage of these uh, improvements, then you need to use the old controller where you mount the phone on the top. The clear advantage of using the old setup is that the changes stay permanently where you have to apply them every time you use the smart controller. If you're using the smart controller, the FCC swap is the only option. So the procedure from here is that you, of course, you need to decide if you want to buy it for iOS or you want to buy it for uh, Android. And then you press uh, buy iOS app and then you complete your purchase. If there's something along this process after you have purchased or before you decide to purchase, there is a really, really good um, FAQ section on uh, the website that will allow you to go and read all the details and all the small prints that you probably need to know before you move ahead and uh, do the purchase. There's also a very nice uh, selection of uh, tutorials that will show you all the, all the details uh, how it works. But I will provide a live demonstration for you here shortly so you can see how easy it actually is to use it. Apart from the tutorials, there's also a smart controller section that will describe in details how you make this work with the smart controller. And because I have an iPhone, I will continue with that part. So after you have completed the purchase, you will receive an email that will ask you to provide the UUID identification number for your phone. And the way that you do that is that you take a, a USB-C cable to Lightning or yeah, whatever that fits into your phone. And then you will simply go in here and uh, then you will plug in the phone. So once uh, the iPhone shows up here, you simply just press it here. After you have uh, typed in your, your pin code uh, to trust the device, then you simply just go in here and then the UUID that's hidden up here somewhere. You can just, 
it's doing the synchronization and all sorts of stuff, but you can just press up here below the name on the phone and then you get the UUID here. And if you right click here, you can copy the UUID number and that one needs to go into the email to the Drone Tweaks team. Once they receive that and then within, I think 24 hours, you will receive a download link that you can use that will install a modified version of the DJI Fly app on your phone. So once you have the application down on your phone, you will have an icon that looks like the original DJI Fly app, but it has FCC in brackets in front of it. If you press that one, you would see that it's actually not possible to run the app. It says developer mode required, that the app requires developer mode to run until developer mode has been enabled. This app will not be able to be used. So we need to do that. So the way that we enable that is that we go here under the settings and then we search for it. That's the easiest one. And then we search for privacy and security. And then we need to scroll down to the very bottom. And then there's an option that's called developer mode. And if we enable that, the phone needs to restart and then it will be in developer mode. So we restart the phone. And now it says ready to enable developer mode. <laughs> a double question. Are you really, really sure? Yes, I'm really, really sure. So I need to unlock the phone. So, so now it's booting up in developer mode. So now everything is booted up and the phone is in developer mode. So I can press the app here now. And so now it will start up like a regular DJI app. So allow app to track, that's fine. Allow while using the app. Uh, send you notifications, it's also fine, allow. All the usual stuff that you need to do to be able to uh, allow full access. Uh, yeah, authorize all, not now. Maybe not, this is not a good idea to <laughs> join the developer program. And then, uh, yeah, I'm logged in. So I just log in on my account here. Yeah, maybe I don't need to do that. That doesn't matter. I don't need to fly the drone to show you this works. And then you're just getting a warning. And this one is from DJI that uh, if you're not logging in, you will face this uh, yeah, 50 meters uh, distance uh, limitation and maybe 30 meters in altitude. But we don't need that to just to show you that it works. But in case you are tempted to try it out, there's of course links in the description below so you can move ahead and, uh, and try it out for yourself. To be able to show you that this works, uh, we need to fire up a drone and it needs to get a GPS lock. So I will go outside and perform uh, the demonstration just to show you. Yep. So. So now we're ready. So we have uh, the drone, we have uh, the RC2 uh, and uh, the iPhone with the FCC app installed. So these are the components that we need. So when I launch the app, you might need to do it a few times. It will prompt you to type in uh, your credentials. So uh, and, uh, I'll do that. Then it says log in successfully and you need to restart the app for this to work. And remember, it's important. It's not your DJI credentials that you need to type in. It's uh, the credentials that is provided by Drone Tweaks. All right. So now we should be ready to perform the operation. So it says now FCC mode enabled, fly with caution. By using this application, you acknowledge that you receive special permission to increase transmission power and assume full reliability for any potential or legal ramification. And uh, it's your responsibility to make sure that you are within the law and uh, proceed at your own risk. And consider this video only for demonstrational purpose. Let me show you the procedure, how to switch it from a C mode to FCC mode. The first thing that I want to show you is how you actually establish that the drone is in a CE mode. And the way that we do that is that we connect to the drone. And then we go under the three dots in the upper right corner. And then we go under the transmission tab and we scroll down to the chart here. And if we take a look at the chart here, so if you see the minus 90 dB line, that's close to the one kilometer mark here on this side, then uh, that means that the drone is in CE mode. If those are separated, that means that it's switched into FCC mode. So let me show you the procedure, how you use the Drone Tweaks FCC app to obtain that. So the first thing that we need to do now is we need to connect 
through the original DJI Fly app or the official DJI Fly app. And if we press quick transfer here, we get the options to connect to the drone. So if I press the drone here, then I get this dialog and I can press join. And now it will connect to the drone and you can see all the footage that is right now stored on the drone. And then you need to kill the app and switch to the FCC version of the DJI Fly app. And then we go in the FCC. So I simply press OK. And then we don't need this one anymore. We just leave that on the table and then we go back to controlling the aircraft. So now we're back and we have the, uh, the we still have contact here for the drone. And let's just check if it has switched into FCC mode. So see if I go in here now, see, now it jumped. So now you have separation here, see? The one kilometer mark is uh, positioned slightly above the minus 90 dB line, which means that the drone is in FCC mode. If I just turn it off now, and I also turn off the controller here, so while this is booting up, let me just reiterate what you need to do. Once you have the FCC hack in a app installed on your phone, you need to log in with the credentials that is provided by uh, Drone Tweaks. Then you need to boot up uh, the drone and uh, the smart controller and wait for it to require GPS lock. Then the next step is that you launch the official DJI app and then you connect using quick transfer to the drone. After that has been established, the connection has been established, then you kill the official DJI app and then you switch to the FCC app and then the drone will be switched into FCC mode. So right after that, you can leave the phone and then you can move over to the remote controller and then you can switch it into flying mode. So just by rebooting the whole system, then it's automatically switched back into CE mode. So we can just check that by going under the three dots in the upper right corner and then go down to yeah, the transmission tab. And now you can see that the minus 90 dB line that aligns with the one kilometer mark. And then it means that it's back in CE mode. So it's very, very easy to switch back and forward between these, but you need to do it when you are out in the field and you need to do it every time that you go out. One thing that I do wanna uh, mention, because I had some complaints about uh, not saying that clearly on the last video, when you buy at least a license for iOS, I, I can't uh, really talk to, uh, to the one for, for Android, but uh, because there are this Apple tax on top of it, it's only for one year at a time. But in case you are tempted to try it out, there's of course links in the description below, so you can move ahead and, uh, and try it out for yourself. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you on the next one.